So I'm thankful to Dr. Jaydeep. So just you may, you may just say next. I will just change the slides. I'm thankful to organizers of the Endocrine Symposium, Satellite Symposium for giving this opportunity. I shall be talking about pregnancy in suspected acromegaly. I come across so far four cases of acromegaly in men. One case of zygantism in a 17 year old boy with somatotroph adenoma and one lady who presented with amenorrhea galactoria and turned out to be case of somatolactotroph adenoma. Unfortunately, she committed suicide. So I do not have any personal experience of dealing with a case of acromegaly with pregnancy. I am going to review the literature. The agenda would be pathophysiology of acromegaly, changes in growth hormone IGF axis in pregnancy, what is interaction between pregnancy and acromegaly, and how does acromegaly affect pregnancy, and what is the management of pregnancy in a patient with acromegaly. Next slide, please. Coming to pathophysiology of acromegaly, there is hyperplasia of somatotrophs or somatolectotrophs. There is high level of growth hormone, which leads to elaboration of IGF-1 from the liver. And there is very high level of IGF-1, which in turn leads to acromegaloid changes throughout the body. Because of lectotroph mixed tumors, many cases have a hyperprolactinemia. A pure somatotroph adenoma because of compression of pituitary stock can also lead to hyperprolactinemia because of interruption of the tronic tonic dopaminergic tone. Hyperprolactinemia itself can cause hypogonadism. Enlarging tumor can compress gonadotrophs, can lead to hypogonadism. There can be multiple pituitary hormone deficiencies, including hypothyroidism, which in turn can lead to hypogonadism. So growth hormone tumor per se, hyperprolactinemia, hypothyroidism can lead to hypogonadism. And in majority of cases of acromegaly, there is hypofertility. Next slide, please. However, with advances in management of acromegaly in the form of transphenoidal endoscopic surgeries with minimal injury to the rest of the parenchyma of the pituitary, the outcome regarding pregnancy has improved. Now, Ladies with acromegaly on treatment can conceive. And there are some cases where assisted reproductive techniques have helped them to conceive and to enjoy the benefit of motherhood and parenting. Next slide, please. So acromegaly and pregnancy interaction. Beginning in the early pregnancy, late part of the first trimester, placental growth hormone is secreted. It takes over growth hormone secreted by pituitary more or less completely. By the end of, by the beginning of the second half of the pregnancy, pituitary growth hormone tends to be negligible. So there is suppression of pituitary growth hormone, particularly in the second half of pregnancy and the placental growth hormone takes over. It leads to two to three fold increase in level of growth hormone, level of IGF compared to pre-pregnancy. So pregnancy in fact is a state of physiological acromegaly. It leads to high level of placental growth hormone. It leads to high level of IGF, which is almost two to three times pre-pregnancy levels in a normal woman. And this ensures transfer of nutrients to the baby and adequate fetoplacental growth. In an acromegalic woman, pituitary growth hormone may not be completely suppressed. But in spite of non-suppression of pituitary growth hormone, because of estrogen induced resistance to growth hormone action on liver, IGF does not rise. In fact, acromegalic patients who conceive in first trimester develop low levels of IGF compared to pre-pregnancy level of IGF. So estradiol elevation associated with pregnancy leads to suppression of IGF, even if pituitary growth hormone is not completely suppressed. 
this igf together with hypersomatotrophism if it is not controlled prior to pregnancy may be associated with hyperglycemia and may be associated with hypertension so there is possibility of gestational diabetes and there is possibility of gravid hypertension in addition there may be effect of coexisting pituitary hormone deficiency because of tumor tumor size leading to compression of the other cells of anterior pituitary because of surgery induced damage to pituitary or because of chemotherapy radiotherapy induced damage to pituitary and there may be effects of treatment of acromegaly on the fetus or feto placental unit let us discuss those in review of literature next slide this is a retrospective multi center study of 59 pregnancies in 46 women reported by philip caron from france the group sent questionnaire to all members of french pituitary club which is a sub group of french society of endocrinology they were asked about the baseline characteristics of the patients their age their duration of treatment their level of growth hormone prior to conception level of igf prior to conception changes in growth hormone and level of igf during pregnancy during the three trimesters what was the characteristics of hypersomatotropism in these 46 women whether it was microadenoma whether it was macroadenoma whether they, how many of them were diagnosed during pregnancy how many total pregnancies took place what was the mod modality of conception what was the obstetric outcome and what was the neonatal outcome so this is a retrospective analysis of 46 women reported from france this is the largest series and it was reported in 2010 46 women seven of whom had microadenoma 39 had macroadenoma three were diagnosed during pregnancy and all of them were picked up because of visual field defect these 46 women had 64 delivery pregnancies two ended up in miscarriages and two who had very high level of growth hormone and required high level of growth hormone suppressive therapy medically opted for termination so ultimately 59 pregnancies were left out of these 59 pregnancies five were assisted pregnancies they were conceived with assisted reproductive techniques and all of them were twin pregnancies so 59 pregnancies five of them being twin twin pregnancies resulted in 64 newborns pre pregnancy surgery was done in 39 of these 46 women pre pregnancy radiotherapy was done in 14 of them next slide please based on growth hormone and igf level 23 of them were well controlled prior to conception 34 were inadequately controlled treatment during pregnancy was dopamine agonist in 24 somatostatin analog in 14 next slide please the growth hormone igf axis evaluation revealed that mean igf1 level decreased in first trimester significantly in 12 women and in all these 12 women growth hormone remained changed thereby reinforcing the concept that elevated level of estradiol in first trimester suppresses growth hormone action on liver thereby decreasing igf without decreasing growth hormone four women developed gestational diabetes eight women developed hypertension this prevalence this incident diabetes and incident pregnancy induced hypertension was reported to be higher than what has been reported in french literature in french ladies who conceive with similar kind of demographic characteristics five babies were born small for gestational age all of them were on somatostatin analog plus minus dopamine agonist two were on somatostatin analog plus dopamine agonist three were on somatostatin analog alone 
two babies were macrosomic that is more than 90th, 90th percentile for the newborns of french inherited french gene pool postpartum mri was done in 27 ladies with a mean duration of 3.9 months after delivery in three ladies tumor increased in size in two is shrunk it remained unchanged in 22 so based on these observations the authors of the retrospective analysis opined next slide that pregnancy in women with active or uncontrolled acromegaly may be associated with an increased risk of gestational diabetes and gravid hypertension all four women who developed gdm and eight women who developed gravid hypertension had elevated level of growth hormone and igf prior to conception pregnancy is occasionally associated with symptomatic enlargement of growth hormone secreting pituitary macroadenoma symptomatic in the sense that there is visual field defect or there is headache which may require intervention in the form of free institution of therapy changes in serum growth hormone and igf concentration are variable during pregnancy indicating that routine monitoring is not mandatory if pregnancy is uneventful growth hormone suppressive treatment can be safely withdrawn after conception in most acromegalic women these were the observations of the authors of this particular retrospective analysis from france next slide please there is another prospective study from europe from south america this is a brazilian group who reported eight women with 10 pregnancies they had history of prior surgery there was no history of radiotherapy women on cabergolin or octreotide at the time of conception drug was withdrawn on confirmation of pregnancy pre pregnancy growth hormone and igf was measured growth hormone igf was measured during each trimester clinical evaluation and visual field was done at each visit next slide please so in this brazilian prospective study growth hormone surge was seen on drug withdrawal but not associated with increase in igf1 possibly due to high maternal estrogen blocking hepatic growth hormone action five pregnant in five pregnancies growth hormone was done by non interference assay during during pregnancy and it showed rise in placental growth hormone and lack of suppression of pituitary growth hormone in patients while there was suppression of pituitary growth hormone in control cohort headache was reported possibly due to octreotide withdrawal octreotide possibly because of suppression of nociceptive peptide which is not yet recognized leads to suppression of headache even without suppression of tumor size so headache was reported in almost all the 10 cases but it was not reported or not related to tumor size increase possibly related to withdrawal of octreotide next slide mri cell was done in 1 to 29 weeks after delivery in all eight women there was no increase in the tumor size in any one of them one case developed gdm one developed pregnancy induced hypertension and they opined that this was comparable to what is reported from background prevalence in the brazilian population so they said that gdm and pih incident incidence was comparable to what is reported in non acromegalic population no adverse neonatal outcome one was delivered at 35 weeks nine were taken to term pharmacological treatment can be withdrawn on confirmation of pre on confirmation of pregnancy was the opinion of authors of this prospective study now there is a review article published in 2017 fetal placental collaboration between mother and child takes over control over growth hormone igf not only in normal pregnancy but also to a certain extent in acromegaly medications for high growth hormone level or actions have, have been continued during pregnancy in a subset of these women dopamine agonists somatostatin analogs and growth hormone receptor antagonists have been used and data suggests that there is no adverse consequences for the mother or child but 
the author of this review article said next slide that once the pregnancy is confirmed in a patient with acromegaly on medical line of treatment these drugs should be withdrawn because their safety data regarding their use in pregnancy as far as child and mother is concerned is not available and additionally medical treatment is not needed as tumor size and disease activity are not reported to escape so this was the opinion of the authors of this review article now coming to the effect of medical treatment of acromegaly on mother and child there are three modalities of treatment bromotriptyline cabergolin quinagolin in dopamine agonist category ofiotide octotide lar and lenvotide in somatostatin analog category and agvisomant in growth hormone receptor antagonist category next slide most of the data regarding cabergolin safety in pregnancy has come from treatment of prolactinomas ricky et al collected information on 61 pregnancies in 50 women treated with cabergolin 19.7% uh, that is 12 had early terminations five induced abortions six spontaneous abortions and one hydrated with from mole 80.3% had live births and their data was not supportive of a major congenital malformation risk greater than 10% with pregnancy exposure to cabergolin so cabergolin is not teratogenic again its long term safety is not yet available because of lack of long term studies next Mafi et al reported a case study on effect of ofiotide a somatostatin receptor ligand on uterine blood flow which they address as acute reversible and clinically irrelevant hemodynamic change in maternal fetal barrier so in their opinion it is transient and it is of no clinical significance but this has been quoted as one of the reason for small for gestational age babies who are exposed to ofiotide in utero next slide please and another study found certain degree of mother to fetus transplacental passage of at least ofiotide by passive diffusion so that has to be kept in mind while deciding to continue ofiotide during pregnancy because there is definite risk of fetal exposure next slide has not at all reported a 24 year old woman with acute acromegaly despite pituitary surgery and irradiation who received octreotide lar treatment for control of growth hormone throughout her pregnancy and she delivered a healthy baby after an uneventful outcome uneventful pregnancy regarding peggy soman somnen the largest data is by wonder lily the presented data reflect the largest series of day, to date and do not suggest adverse consequences of pregnisomant on pregnancy outcome however they reported that this molecule should be discontinued once the pregnancy is confirmed until unless it is absolutely necessary to continue the molecule next slide Gridel reported a case of 26 year old female with acromegaly who had failed surgical and subsequent medical therapy but whose disease was well controlled on pack b patient conceived continued throughout the pregnancy they collected both maternal and cord blood samples at parturition documented its presence in fetal presence in the neonatal circulation documented its presence in breast milk so pegvisomant so far is not reported to be teratogenic but there is definite evidence of exposure in utero to the molecule so to conclude my presentation pregnancy in women with acute or uncontrolled acromegaly may be associated with an increased risk of gdm and gravid hypertension so well controlled pregnancy well controlled lady with acromegaly once she conceives she is at par with other women 
of the same background as far as gdm and gravid hypertension is concerned occasionally there may be enlargement of the tumor particularly a macroadenoma growth hormone and igf concentration need not be monitored in an uneventful pregnancy and growth hormone treatment suppressive treatment should be withdrawn once the pregnancy is confirmed next slide thank you